Will you leave Libya? Hmm? <laughs> Muammar Gaddafi clearly lost the confidence of his own people. No one can kill Muammar Gaddafi. And the legitimacy to lead. They, they, they will die. Shiver, shiver, beat, beat, dar, dar, zanga, zanga, zarek, zarek. Innocent civilians were beaten. We are here. We told them to go everywhere. They found nothing. Zero. Gaddafi will never step down. He's a fighter to the end. Imprisoned. In some cases, killed. According to Russia's military, they have not registered any of those air strikes. According to them, the pictures show that nothing of that sort has been going on the ground. The truth seems more to be a city going about its everyday business. This warning, which is the world is watching. They're hiding this. They're hiding this. But what's what's going on now? Okay, all the people are here just to be supportive, just to be supportive for our leader, Muammar Gaddafi. Okay. Sure, America has a dozen countries now helping attack Muammar Gaddafi. They would uh, like to see you finish. It's the West, we know them very well. When you are strong, you know, they, are, they run after you. They are like, you know, they are like cats. essentially taking sides in the civil war here, backing the rebels. What do we do if the rebels start behaving irresponsibly? Once again, 
we see that the United Nations is on the wrong side of the conflict. For you Arabs of Benghazi, you should be ashamed of yourselves. We know this has nothing to do with democracy. NATO is investigating claims by a Libyan doctor that seven civilians were killed and 25 wounded as a result of the coalition airstrike near Brega. I think that uh, uh, you don't bomb a village in order to save it. وملك ملوك افريقيا وامام المسلمين مكانتي العالميه ما تسمح لي اني انزل لاي مستوى اخر وشكرا Muammar Gaddafi clearly lost the confidence of his own people and the legitimacy to lead. Instead of respecting the rights of his own people, Gaddafi chose the path of brutal suppression. Ample warning was given that Gaddafi needed to stop his campaign of repression or be held accountable. The Arab League and the European Union joined us in calling for an end to violence. Just yesterday, speaking of the city of Benghazi, a, a city of roughly 700,000 people, he threatened, and I quote, we will have no mercy and no pity. Now here's why this matters to us. Left unchecked, we have every reason to believe that Gaddafi would commit atrocities against his people. Many thousands could die. A humanitarian crisis would ensue. The entire region could be destabilized, endangering many of our allies and partners. And that's why the United States has worked with our allies and partners to shape a strong international response at the United Nations. Now, once more, Muammar Gaddafi has a choice. The resolution that passed lays out very clear conditions that must be met. The United States, the United Kingdom, France, and Arab states agree that a ceasefire must be implemented immediately. That means all attacks against civilians must stop. Gaddafi must stop his troops from advancing on Benghazi, pull them back from Ajubia, Misrata, and Zawiya, and establish water, electricity, and gas supplies to all areas. Humanitarian assistance must be allowed to reach the people of Libya. Let me be clear, these terms are not negotiable. These terms are not subject to negotiation. If Gaddafi does not comply with the resolution, the international community will impose consequences, and the resolution will be enforced through military action.
the United States is prepared to act as part of an international coalition. American leadership is essential, but that does not mean acting alone. I'm taking this decision with the confidence that action is necessary and that we will not be acting alone. Our goal is focused, our cause is just, and our coalition is strong. Thank you very much. All right, so a U.N. resolution adopted in February suggests that Gaddafi might face in the International Criminal Court over this. Is there a similarity between Gaddafi's position now and that of Slobodan Milosevic in the late 90s in Serbia? I, I would say that um, there's definitely been a pattern implemented ever since the 1990s that um, any particular government uh, that is being targeted for uh, regime change is, is being criminalized and demonized in the press. Just a week ago, media reports suggested that Gaddafi was close to defeat, but today he's still there, and news of his downfall proved to be exaggerated. Earlier, our Paula Sleer went to Tripoli to uncover how things really stood. Part of the criticism reports that Gaddafi's warplanes bombed and killed dozens of protesters in the capital city. The future of Libya appears to be on a knife edge. Fighter jets have been bombarding the capital, Tripoli, reportedly on the orders of leader Muammar Gaddafi. Later on, they told us that Tripoli is bombed by Air Force uh, and uh, heavy uh, guns or something like that. And it completely, it must, uh, it's not the true. The truth seems more to be a city going about its everyday business. These are hardly the pictures of a city on the brink of war. Meanwhile, Libya's capital Tripoli is bracing for what could be another night of gunfire, explosions and fighting. Eyewitnesses say warplanes had been firing at opposition supporters from the air. The war is clearly not in Tripoli. And just as clearly, Western media has been a little too quick to write off Gaddafi. Information from Russia's joint staff who are saying that they have been monitoring the situation in Libya from space via satellites since the beginning of the unrest in the country. And according to them, some of the reports by the, made by the Western media are not entirely corresponding to the pictures that they are getting. Uh, to be more precise, according to Al Jazeera and to BBC, on the 22nd of February, uh, Libyan government has been to the airstrikes on Benghazi, the biggest city in the country, and on Tripoli. And according to Russia's military, they have not registered any of those airstrikes. According to them, the pictures show that nothing of that sort has been going on the ground. Pretty much make a judgment that those uh, attacks, which the Western media has been reporting on, have not been made. Is that Colonel Gaddafi is really going to all extremes to push back, to make his presence felt in an interview he gave and in an interview his son gave today. Saturday, both of them denied reports that the East was in the hands of the rebels. They said that they were in control, that everything was calm, and that any kind of reporting that the government was killing its own people was simply untrue. They blamed the Western media for what they have termed propaganda. People here simply do not want the foreign community to get involved. They believe that any kind of humanitarian assistance very often is an excuse for military aid and military intervention. The latest news we have, though, is that the British government today, Saturday, confirmed that it was deploying to Libya within the next 24 hours. We know that they say that this deployment is for evacuation and humanitarian purposes, but as I'm mentioning, many people here are concerned that it will also come with some kind of military aspect. The fog of war has settled over the unrest in, in Libya. There's conflicting reports on the number of killed, airstrikes by Qaddafi forces, the number of cities controlled by the opposition, pretty much everything that's being reported. Last week, a wave of, of uh, uh, correspondence suggested the opposition was in control of almost the whole country and Qaddafi was doomed. Artizak Sanaboyko went to the opposition held Benghazi to find out why these turned out to be exaggerations. For it. On TV screens, Benghazi may look like the center of the rebel resistance. The country is waking to another day of chaos. Gaddafi may have lost about half of his country. They watched these bombs fall from the skies. But in reality, it's more like a seaside resort than a conflict zone. Hotels are fully booked with journalists and residents go about their daily lives. Here boys are looking for new things to play with. Toy guns are in ample supply.
Yet some reports sent from Benghazi refer to the situation in eastern Libya as war. Not a conflict zone where rebels are engaged in sporadic and isolated pitch battles with pro-Gaddafi forces, but an all-out war. Muammar Gaddafi is striking back. Forces loyal to Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi appear to be advancing east. Libya's leader Muammar Gaddafi has fled the country. With rebels professing their readiness to fight Gaddafi's regime to the bitter end, no wonder news reports are carrying predictions of imminent civil war. Yet, as the rebels' inability to mount a fully-fledged offensive becomes more apparent, so is the unbalanced nature of the coverage. Rather than being impartial observers, some networks stop short of directing the protesters. But here, the Al Jazeera crew is warming up the crowd in time for their next live report. What, what is your general take on why there is so much misinformation and conflicting reports when it comes to Libya? Well, it's basically a psychological operation. There's an entire wing of the Pentagon and the State Department that's dedicated to psychological operations. These are perception management is the modern term. The previous term was propaganda. But uh, psychological operation is to convince the American public or the Eng English-speaking world and English news-consuming world that something's going on that may or may not be actually happening, and that's what we're seeing a lot of with respect to Libya. There's no shortage of war zones to go to today where people are dying at the rate of 1,500 people a day in eastern Congo. Mm -hmm. Journalists go in and out of there, but it's not being reported at all. Same thing with Sudan. There's conflict going on in certain regions of Sudan. The conflict in Afghanistan, but what we're getting is a pro-U.S., pro-Pentagon, one-sided picture of a, a situation which fills the media with the idea that there's freedom fighters involved in Libya and that there's a government regime that's been an, an atrocious terrorist government. The oil maps of Libya are huge and the oil concessions are huge and it's a, it's a massive oil operation that's been going on with the support and the involvement of Italy, France and Britain since 1970, since 1959 when the oil was discovered, but the U.S. hasn't had a piece of that pie. So the idea is to continue to convince the American public that genocide is happening in Libya, which is absolute nonsense, and therefore we need to take a, you know, the all-powerful white American role is to go out there and save somebody that needs saving, when actually we're involved in the killing because we're, I believe we're supporting the rebels in Libya. Now back to our top story. According to reports, gunfire and explosions are heard in Tripoli, but eyewitnesses say the information is being wildly exaggerated. We can now cross live to our independent journalist, Lizzie Phelan, to hear her account about the situation on the ground there. Now, hello, Hi. Lizzie. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, can you confirm at this point that reports, the reports that there are heavy gunfire on the ground right now? <laughs> yes, well, you might be able to hear in the background, I'm not sure if you can, the gunfire and fireworks that are happening. And this gunfire and fireworks is celebratory gunfire and fireworks as a result of the earlier um, uh, emergence of rebels in the city, uh, or armed gangs, as the Libyan government are calling them, um, that have, have now been cleared out of the city and they've now been captured and arrested and essentially uh, dealt with. So the only, the only gunfire uh, that we're hearing is celebratory gunfire and the only explosions that we're hearing are NATO airstrikes or NATO sound bombs which are clearly designed to create a sense of panic in the capital city of Tripoli. Now what we're hearing that uh, happened earlier today is that the, the rebels in Libya via the media, via the um, their own channels. They created, uh, and by Al Jazeera, of course, which has been at the center of the media conspiracy against Libya, they created some fake uh, footage of themselves inside Zawiya, claiming that they were inside Zawiya and Tripoli. This created, and of course, the media then, the mainstream media, um, the Western media in particular, and Al Jazeera then repeated these reports, which created a sense of panic amongst the Libyan people. So they went inside their homes uh, in fear, and then. Um, Later on, uh, in areas like Fashlun and Sukarjuma, um, and after uh, the prayers, a number of armed gangs emerged, which are essentially sleeper cells of rebels inside inside the city, and began um, firing randomly and setting things on fire and threatening ordinary people that if they did not join them, that they would be uh, assassinated. They then took uh, footage of the streets, which were empty, as I said, because people were scared inside their homes, which created a sense that they were uh, uh, um, in the process of capturing the city. 
Then what happens is that, the, of course, that many people in Tripoli have been armed by the government, and so these people came out to defend their, their capital, and then the government spokesman came out and insisted that the situation had been, uh, had been brought under control. And so as a result, now in Green Square and Baba Ziza uh, compounds, the, ma the masses uh, have come out um, because they feel safe again. And as I said, they're letting off celebratory gunfire and fireworks. And uh, leader Muammar Gaddafi just about 15, 20 minutes ago spoke to the masses live because there have obviously been reports that he has fled the country. Now, you, and, me you mentioned that uh, Gaddafi has actually shown up and spoken to the people, has made a public appearance, and you're saying that now the people are not scared at this moment in time. No, well, he didn't make a public appearance. He spoke live via phone uh, to, to insist that he was still alive and well and inside, inside the country. And whenever um, Gaddafi speaks, there tends to be a pattern of a level of panic being built up by the media because, of course, NATO isn't um, having any success on the ground. So the only way it can have a semblance of success is through creating fabrications via the media um, so that it can convince both the Security Council uh, and the international public opinion that its war here is worthwhile. Do you but think that time, uh, Gaddafi's uh, people are preparing at least on some level for an assault? Well, the people here since the beginning of the crisis have been um, preparing to defend themselves from the, the threat of the opposition uh, making any advances and also for, for the th from the threat of NATO. So, as I said, since the beginning of the crisis, people have been taken, taking up um, government, the government offer of weapons training and government-issued weapons. So the, the people of this city in particular are literally armed to the teeth and, and ready to defend their capital and, and their country and stand, and stand by the, their leader, Muammar. Gaddafi, as we, we have seen by the million marches across the country, there is mass support for him here, and the people are literally uh, prepared to, to die for him and their country. Today's events, though, bring to a close the 42-year reign of this ruthless dictator, the blood of, of so many lives on his hands. Yeah, there is a cacophony of celebration behind us. Images smothered across screens of celebration. The Libyan leader, Muammar Gaddafi, dead. This mad dog of the Middle East has a, a goal of a world revolution. Once despised as a sponsor of world terrorism, only years later, Muammar Gaddafi's friendship with the Western world blossomed. Ties between the United States and Libya have taken a remarkable and positive turn in recent years. Senator John McCain reminisces over time spent with the Libyan leader. In 2009, he tweeted, Late evening with Colonel Gaddafi at his ranch in Libya. Interesting meeting with an interesting man. Less than a decade ago, Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice announced the U.S. was restoring full diplomatic relations with Libya. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair had no qualms doing business with Gaddafi. And Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi got cozy with him at a United Nations summit in Rome. And here's President Obama shaking hands with him at the G8 summit in Italy. The Libyan leader also got close with British Prime Minister Gordon Brown. And from politics to pop stars, icons from Mariah Carey to Beyonce have performed for the Libyan leader. All the while, Western leaders were well aware of the atrocities being committed by Gaddafi's regime. It was no secret that in the mid-90s, an estimated 1,200 political prisoners were massacred. But there was no talk of intervention then. There was talk of oil deals. But the relationship turned sour early this year when NATO launched military operations against Libya. Today, a victory for the West, the death of a dictator, of a good friend turned enemy. So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed Yes, weapons. we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> I am very pleased to uh, welcome Minister Gaddafi here to the State Department. 
Uh, we uh, deeply value uh, the relationship between the United States and Libya. Uh, we have uh, many opportunities to deepen and broaden our cooperation, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, uh, building on this relationship. So, Mr. Minister, welcome so much here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We're delighted you're here. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Today, I will give you the reason why the West is fighting Gaddafi. I'll tell you exactly what is really going on in Libya. I will tell you what the mainstream media will not tell you. There are three reasons why Gaddafi has to die. And among those three reasons, none of them have to do with him killing his own people. Number one, Gaddafi is the one who gave the opportunity for an African satellite for communication. It is in 1992 that 45 countries in Africa decided that they want to have their own satellite. This will cover internet, telephone communication, and all other communications. But the problem was how to find the money for this project. Where did they get the money from? They decided to go to the IMF. But the IMF knew that sponsoring this will be more dangerous for Western countries. Why? Because Western countries were making $500 million per year for all telecommunication in Africa, even inside Africa. $500 million per year. Not includes interest. That's how much they were making. So it is in 2007 that Gaddafi will come up with most of the money for this project. Africa will now have his first communication satellite, which will give the opportunity to countries like South Africa, Nigeria, Algeria, Angola. Libya and other countries to now have their own telecommunication satellites. They will now provide communication to their own people. It will only cost African countries $400 million, only a one payment of $400 million to make this happen. Now you imagine how much money does Europe lost because of this? $500 million per year that Gaddafi made them lose by sponsoring the satellite. Just Gaddafi himself comes up with $300 million and other countries can impeach them. So this is reason number one why they need Gaddafi dead. Two, Gaddafi and African countries decide to create three major banks in Africa. One, the AMF, African Monetary Fund. The African Monetary Fund will headquarter in Cameroon, Yaoundé. This was to be created in 2011, this year. With the African Monetary Fund, African countries will no longer need to go to the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund. So just imagine yourself how much money Europe will lose if the AMF is created. When Western countries found out that this is what was happening, they actually wanted to be part of it. I believe it is in 2006 in Yahoo Day, Cameroon, that African countries decided that 
no other countries outside of Africa will be part of the AMF. Now you can imagine what's going on here. Not only that they try to cut them money, but on top of that, they don't even want them to be part of this. Because being part of this will mean that they will have to control what is going on. The second bank will be the Central African Bank. The Central African Bank will be headquartered in Abuja in Nigeria. What this bank will do, it will stop African countries from using Western currency. Like if you go to Africa today, the countries like Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, Gabon, and many other French-speaking countries are using the franc CFA. With this bank, we will have our own currency. Like the Naira in Nigeria. Gaddafi, once again, came up with most of the money for this project. And the third bank that was supposed to be created was going to headquarter in Libya. The Bank of Investment. This bank will control most of investment in Africa. The Central Bank of Investment. Now you imagine yourself what's going on here. Gaddafi is trying to break Western economy by doing this. But that's not his intention. His intention is to free Africa from his trap. African people want to be independent. Western countries don't want that. And that's what's going on here. So the money that Obama confiscated, stole from uh, uh, Gaddafi, is the money that was going to help for all those projects. He's telling you today that Gaddafi is trying to kill his own people with that money. No, Mr. President, you know that that's not true. He probably doesn't even know because he has no experience. He has no experience. He doesn't even know what's going on. He's like a puppy. They tell him what to do. Oh, well, let me inform you, Mr. President, that money was going to sponsor all those projects. That money that you confiscated from Libya. The third reason why Gaddafi has to die has to do with the United States of Africa. This man has been pushing African countries to unite, just like the United States of America. The very first thing that European countries, when they were colonizing African countries, did was to divide African people. When you want to break a powerful home, you have to find a way to turn that family against each other. That's the very first thing Western countries did to keep us from being powerful. The second thing they did was to stop education. Make, make sure that African people are not educated. Education is the key to success. By us being educated and educating our own people, we are stopping major problem in Africa. And the third thing they did was to place dictators in power in Africa who will give them everything they want. And every time that the population will stand up, these dictators will have the support of European countries to kill those protesters. They were all surprised with what happened in Tunisia, in Egypt. 
And they took the opportunity to then create a problem in Libya. Not one of you will show me footage of the same uprising that we saw in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Libya. Not one of you will show me that type of footage. This was created by Western countries. When you go to Libya, you get free education. I'm talking about college education, free health care. When you are newlywed and you don't yet have a job, you get free apartments. Libya is a beautiful country. And today they are telling us that Gaddafi is killing his own people. But yet he's the same one who is giving them everything. Educate, free education, free health care, feeding his own people, and killing them again? Does that make sense to you? Let me tell you what the countries that are bombing Libya today have in common. They are broke. Oh yes, they are broke. Just in the United States alone is borrowing money from China. Europe is going down with the euro. Every one of those countries in NATO are broke. And Gaddafi is making it worse by giving African people independence. And that's why you see Hillary Clinton going to Africa and telling African people to reject Gaddafi. Don't deal with Gaddafi. In fact, they've requested that the rebels open an embassy in Washington, D.C making an illegal movement legal that's what the obama administration is doing hillary clinton is also asking african people not to deal with china <laughs> tell me let me just ask this ben. what what can china do to african countries that western countries haven't done yet i like to know myself how worse can it be as far as I'm concerned, China is not the one going around bombing other countries. I can't remember the last war China has been in. China is not the one going, killing African people today with drones. China is not the one fighting in Iraq or Afghanistan in the name of democracy. China is making money. Why not deal with China? What have you done to African people that is good? What have you given African people that is good? When you are going somewhere in Africa, in different African countries, and asking African people not to deal with China, what are we receiving in exchange of that? Other than bombs, drones, and everything else. What are we receiving? China is the number one investor in Africa. The African satellite that I'm talking about today was put together by Chinese and Russians. We African people will survive. We will survive your drones and your bombing, your insult and everything else, your humiliations. We've survived that. China is not going to do anything to us that you haven't done yet. So, Mr. President, let me tell you this. If you're not ashamed, I'm ashamed for you. I'm embarrassed for you. The first African-American president. And this is what you are doing to your own country, to the world, to the people of your race. You are the nightmare of Martin Luther King. He's always talked about his dream. But his nightmare was to see an African president of the United States of America doing what you are doing today, misrepresenting the black race. We're not asking you to give your attention only on African people or only on black people, but to show a good example of what leading is, of what fairness is, of what democracy is really about.
the things that Martin Luther King died for, not just for the liberation of African people, but for fair treatment of everybody, black and white equal, fighting together, sharing. This is an embarrassment and this is a shame. And I hope you stay a one-term president. 